What if you could turn a noisy, high ISO photo into a clean, sharp image with one simple workflow? In this video, I'll show you exactly how DxO Pure Raw 5 works alongside On One Photo Raw to give you stunning results every single time. You won't believe the before and after, and you'll definitely want to stick around to find out how you can get your hands on a free copy of this software. Welcome back to another video right here on Freewell Photos. And today we're looking at Pure Raw 5, which is a noise reduction program made by DxO. Now I mentioned you can get a free copy of this in the opening of the video. To do that, you gotta go check the description box below. There's gonna be a link for the giveaway. I'm gonna be giving away a copy of DxO Pure Raw 5 on August 19th, 2025. And all you have to do to win is one, be subscribed to this channel, and then two, make sure that you fill out the form at the link in the description box below. And yes, it is completely free to sign up. If you're not familiar with Pure Raw 5, this is a noise reduction software that DxO hosts and it works at the beginning of your workflow. So think of this as once you put your SD card into the computer and then this step happens, all right? Um, and I guess maybe you'll wanna save your images to your hard drive and then this step happens. So you wanna do this before you do anything else. And then just be aware that DxO Pure Raw 5 is designed to work with raw files. So this keeps you in a 100% raw workflow, regardless of what software you're gonna be using. Today, I'm gonna to use On One Photo Raw. So let me show you my preferred method of using it. As you can see, I have DxO Pure Raw open on my computer and there's not much to show here, right? This is literally just a space where I have some previous photos that I have uh, ran through Pure Raw 5 recently, and that's all that's in here right now. The way that I like to use Pure Raw 5 is I like to open it. This is a standalone app, so if I come down here, you can see I have Pure Raw 5 activated. It's open on my computer. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller just so we can see what we need to be able to see behind here. So you can notice that I have On One Photo Raw in the background. Now, the way that I use the software is I like to come to On One. So we're just gonna grab this raw image right here. And I'm going to click and drag this to DxO. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and click, come down to the bottom here, hover over DxO. It's gonna open up. I'm gonna hover over it again. You, you wouldn't have to do this if you're using two screens, but for the sake of being able to show you this process, that's why I'm doing it this way. And then when I let go, it's going to add it to DxO. Now we have our image in here, so I'm just gonna double click to take up the full screen. Um, but before I can do that, I wanted to show you this cool little dialogue, all right? So DxO has modules and those modules are camera and lens specific. So for this particular photo, you can see it's saying for a Sony a7R4 and a Sigma 100 to 400, F5 to 6.3, they have a lens correction profile for that camera and lens combination available to you. Now, you don't pay anything for these. You just get access to their database of all of these cameras and lens profiles that they test. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I understood all of it, other than the fact that every time I use these, I get great results. I like what I get whenever I use these. So I want to show you with this image because I have not downloaded this particular camera and lens combination yet. But to do that, all I have to do is click this little download button, hit save, and it's going to download it to my computer. Now, I'll never have to do that again for that camera and lens combination. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, you can do the exact same thing with Photo Lab 8. Now, I'm gonna double click this 
just to expand it on my screen. And you can see I now have an image and this is a raw file from my Sony A7R4. So if I click this, what I can do is send this into the raw processing workspace. I'm not gonna go over every single thing that's here. Not that there's a whole lot to show, but I'm just gonna show you how I use it, how you can use it. And if you got questions, just leave it in the description or not the description box, leave it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer that. So once I click the image, I'm just gonna come down here to process with preview. And this does exactly what you would probably imagine is it's going to process the image and give you a preview. Now on this new version or the pure raw five, there's a few versions of this that have been released in the past. There was older versions of the denoising and demoisaying, I think I'm saying that right, probably not, uh, algorithms that were ran. So for me today, I'm going to click on Deep Prime 3 because this is the newest algorithm that we have available. Now, it doesn't look like much has happened to this photo. If I pull this over to the right, you can see exactly what happens with the denoising capabilities here. So on the left side is the original image, and then on the right side is what Pure Raw 5 is actually processing for this particular image. Pay special attention to the color noise that's happening in the file. Like, the color noise is almost non-existent in this particular image once you run the Deep Prime 3. Now, I do have the luminance slider pulled up to 63. By default, it is set to 40. If you need more, you can pull up the luminance slider and think of this as the how much denoise do you want this to actually do to the image. And you could pull this up relatively high and still retain a lot of great information and detail in the overall image. Like on this particular photo, I pulled this up to 100 and I'm still getting some pretty good looking results. All right. The next item here is force details and think of this as like a sharpening slider. So if I pull this up, you can see it's just going to add in a little bit more sharpening. And if I pull this down, it gets a little less sharp, but no matter what, I usually don't really mess with this. So we'll just leave it at 19. I think 19 is appropriate. And we'll leave the luminance slider up to 100% because this is an image that was shot at 25,600 ISO on my Sony A7R4, which for those of you who don't know, is a large megapixel camera. So these, this is a 61 megapixel file, all right? Really, really large overkill for most photos and most people's needs. Then we have the lens corrections and this information, I'd normally just leave this alone whenever I start to export my images. I'm not overly concerned about it. All right. Now there is the ability to paint things in. If you are one of those people that want to mask in your denoising, I don't use any of these over here and I don't think that they're necessary. I think that, you know, maybe for some people, they could find some value in having this masking capability, but I don't find any uh, use for it. So what we're gonna do is click on this little export arrow here, and this gives us all of our export options. Now, for my workflow, these are the settings that I use. I always wanna export this as a DNG because I wanna keep a raw file. All right, that's very important. I don't need TIFF or JPEG coming out of here. If that's something that you want, then by all means, go for it. But raw files in, raw files out. The next step is the destination. I like to keep the file in the original images folder, and you'll see why that becomes very important here in a little while. Just make sure that you keep your files in the original image folder and this method is gonna work flawlessly for you. And then you can do file renaming and whatever you wanna rename the file is fine. I like to keep the file name that I brought in to DxO Pure Raw and then let it put the backslash or the dash to DxO Deep Prime. So that way I know that this has already been modified through Deep Prime. 
All right. But of course you can edit that. I don't worry myself with it. I just like to have mine set up this way. You can really rename this however you want. I do recommend, however, for the method that I'm going to show that you leave the file name as it like leave the file name in there. Right. If you want to go with one of these other options, you could do so, but definitely leave the file name in there. And then uh, export, don't export after, uh, I'm sorry, don't export after processing. I just leave this turned off and everything works out just fine. Now that I know that all of these settings are done, and by the way, these settings are sticky, meaning that once you set it, it will stay this way until you change it. So I'm not ever going to worry about that. And I didn't cover the presets because I don't really think presets are all that important for this software because this software is super simple. I've spent more time explaining it than I typically ever spend actually modifying my images. So just take that for what it's worth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit back to Lightbox. And the reason I do this is I typically process batches of images for today's example. I'm only processing one image, but know that if I wanted to, I could select multiple images here and then I can add them to the uh, processing queue. But I'm only gonna work on this one file right here, and then I'm gonna hit process. Now, what ends up happening, you get this little dialog box, and this is essentially everything that was over on the right side of the screen earlier, but it's just confirming that this is what you want. So you wanna use Deep Prime, and it's using the wrong, uh, denoising method. So let's go ahead and change that to Deep Prime 3. You can see right here, it was saying it was using Deep Prime XDX, XD2S or XD. Um, and I guess now is a good time to mention if you are using a camera with an X-Trans sensor, which I believe are from Fujifilm cameras, there is a denoising module or algorithm that would be specifically for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then you have that available to you right here. Uh, the luminance value, I had that all the way up, so I'm not sure what happened. I think it just rewrote the preset or, or something of the sort. And I think I have force detail up to like 20. So we'll leave it like that. And I like the lens correction actions here. So I'm gonna hit apply. And so now I have the denoise method set to deep prime, my lens distortion, good to go. And all of this stuff, luminance 95, force details 20. Output is gonna be a DNG to the original folder. This is gonna be the file name, which is good. And then export to application, I have none. You could choose a different application if you so chose. And then if you're using Lightroom, you can actually have this import to your catalog. But today I'm not showing this using Lightroom, showing this using on one as I did at the beginning. So now I can go ahead and hit process now. If you wanted to add this to a queue and then like kind of work through a, another batch of images, you could do that, but I'm not gonna do that today. We'll hit process. And down here at the bottom where it says processing, it's actually creating that. Now, I'm gonna minimize this just a bit, so bear with me. All right, so I now have that minimized and I'm still looking at the folder inside of on one. So what we're going to see here is once this is done processing, meaning that once this image is created on one, because it reads the file structure on your computer. And because I told this to save to that folder on one has already updated the image right here and it just popped up as I was hovering over it. I didn't have to re-import an image or do anything crazy like that. And that's the beauty of working with On1. Because it's reading your file structure, it's just going to add it into the file structure. But once you're done, like, you know, assuming you had more than one image, but once it's done, you can just click this X. And I always just click the X to close it out on a Mac, 
it stays running in the background right here. So if I ever find some more images that I need to run through uh, DxO Pure Raw, then I can go ahead and click on this icon up here and I can hit open application and run it that way. Otherwise, I don't really worry about leaving it open any further. So if I needed to close it, I could. And you can see that it's not actually running as an open application. So I'm saving a little bit of that bandwidth, all right? I do love that DxO has given us that option. But now I'm back inside of On One, and guess what? I can come in here and edit this photo just to my heart's content as if this was the raw image straight out of my camera. So that's the reason why you wanna work on the file on the front end versus the back end. All right, so here's the final result of the DxO Pure Raw 5 denoised image. If you found value in the video, smash the like button, leave your questions and comments down below. If you'd like to pick up a copy of this program and save a little bit of money, consider using my coupon code and the affiliate link down in the description box below. Both of those items do give me a small commission for everyone who uses them, but that's at no extra cost to you, and it's a great way of supporting this channel. Now, again, if you want to get a free version of this software, or at least be entered into the giveaway, consider using the link in the description box below, signing up for that, and hitting that subscribe button, because only subscribers can win. Now, if you want to learn more about photo editing, consider signing up for a coaching call with me. A link for that can also be found in the description box below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.